Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lisa Elvin Stoltari, and I am a genealogist and a passionate traveler. Over the last year or so, I have been featuring Les Filles du Roi, or the King's Daughters, and trying to get to know them a little bit better. There are over 700 of them. We're on episode 150, so we've come a long way. We've got a long way to go. Today, we're going to be featuring Marie Benoit in episode 150. But before we begin, I want to show you how you can support the channel. The first three on your left are easy ways for you to keep you in the know. Subscribe, like, and notify. The next three are ways to help the channel grow even greater. We have Coffee, Etsy, and Patreon. All are really unique ways of financially supporting the channel. And we also have um, a PayPal link on my um, on my website, Have Ritual Travel, so you can have a look at that. Don't forget, all previous channel, all previous episodes are uh, listed very easily for you to uh, enjoy on my website as well. So this is a viewer request, so I'm very happy with that. And then also when I dug in my files, it was the grandmother of my best friend's daughter. So there's a family connection there. Let's get to know Marie Benoit a little bit better. So Marie was born about 1653, somewhere in France. We have no other information. Don't know her parents, don't know her circumstance. All we know is that she came to New France. And not only do we know that she came to New France, but we know that she arrived on the Saint Louis de Dieppe on September 25, 1667. And, you know, do the math, she was 14 years old, as far as we can tell, okay, at that time. Just an amazing, an amazing journey for a 14 year old. I can't even imagine um, the courage that it would have taken. So the groom that she selected and who selected her, his name was Pierre Fevreau de, de Laurier. He was born about 1636. He's also from an unknown place in France. So this is kind of like two, cop, two people from nowhere who found this life in New France. So let's get to know Pierre a little bit better. So Pierre arrives in New France as so many did before him. He arrived with the Carignan soldiers and he was with the contre company. So that would have been September of 1665, three years before, two or three years before she would have arrived. So sometime around 1668, Marie marries Pierre at Contrecoeur. We have no marriage record. Um, this is really why we don't know anything about their history, because that marriage record in Quebec is so valuable. And so we still don't know. We know um, based on notor notorial records that they were married sometime in Contre at Contrecoeur. Let's get to know a little bit about that place, Contrecoeur, because remember he was a soldier with the Contrecoeur company. He normally, normally soldiers would have been given some sort of land or, um, you know, approach to come in and uh, do um, kind of, you know, pioneer in that place. So let's have a look at Contrecoeur. As you can see, Contrecoeur is somewhere between Montreal and Sorel. It's kind of close to Sorel. Um, the church that you see on your left is the Église Saint Trinity that was eventually established. On the bottom, you can see how close to the river it really is. There's an old mill that I found a picture of. Contrecoeur was actually given to uh, Antoine de Picadé, the uh, de Contrecoeur. Uh, he was a soldier with the Carignan Sagna Regiment, and Jean Talon awarded him the seigneury. And he and 68 other um, inhabitants became the first pioneers when they established a town in 1681, and, and Pierre was one of them. So Pierre and Marie in 1681 were there, and um, you can see the difference of age. Pierre was 45, Marie was 28. His children, uh, Nicolas, Pierre, Marianne, Antoine, Matrin, Marie, and Jean, seven months. They have three goats and five arpents en valeur. So they have about three to three and a half acres of land. And yes, it's true, they had 13 children. They were truly pioneers. So we have Nicolas, their firstborn, who married first, Catherine Picard, but she passed away at the age of 20. Her mother was actually the fille du roi. Jeanne Cédéry, which we will be doing shortly. Uh, he then married Marie Meunier and had six children, all of whom made it to adulthood. Pierre was alive as of the 
1681 census, but I don't have any other information. Nanny Anne um, married Antoine Emery and had nine children, all of whom made it to adulthood. Upon his death, she married again to a man 20 years younger than her. I love that story. Very, you know, these um, these ladies at the time weren't afraid of uh, the difference of ages. Um, Antoine married Anne Muni and had one child who made it to adulthood before his own early death at 34. Mathurin married Marie Madeleine and Marie and had seven um, children, all of whom made, made it to adulthood. You'll remember that his, Mathurin's sister Marianne married Antoine, so we have a um, sibling connection there. We have Marie who married Francois Picard and had two children um, before her, um, and they both survived, before her own early death at 24. François Picard was the um, brother of Catherine Picard, uh, who married um, who married the firstborn, Nicolas, and passed away at 20. So you can see the connections there and, and the families, the founding families. And then we have Jeanne, um, Jean, who married Jeanne Meunier and had eight children, all of whom made it to adulthood. We have Joseph, who unfortunately died young. Charles married Marie-Angélique Bernard and had three children, all of whom made it. Geneviève married Gabrielle Guillard and had two children, both of whom made it to adulthood. We have René, who passed away at an early age, as well as Jacques. But their last one, Pierre, married Marianne Perrault and had three children, all of whom made it to adulthood. That's a lot of descendants. Pierre would pass away first at the age of 62. He died on May 26, 1708. At his death, they would have been married 40 years. Marie would go on to live another 17 years, dying at the age of 73. Remember how much younger she was. Um, and they are both buried at Contrecoeur. Now, how many descendants do they have? A remarkable. 134 descendants as of 1729. Can't wait to see how many of you are descendants of this fabulous couple as well. And as a final tribute, um, in Contrecoeur, there is an homage à, à nos pioneers, pioneers, à nos pioneers. Um, and we have Pierre and Marie honored there. And always, you know, you have to be kind of open your, your mind when you're doing genealogy because the names and the spellings could be, they're very phonetic. So we have Marie Benoit and we have Pierre Carreau. Um, that's how it came across, but we know that that's him. We know that that's him. So that's a remarkable achievement. So we, they truly were the pioneers. As always, I want to uh, I want to share with you some favorite resources: La Société des Filles du Roi, Quebec Genealogical e Society, Nos Origines, Genealogy Quebec, Migration, and Facebook Filles du Roi Descendants. All of these are amazing resources to be able to further your research into your individual Filles du Roi and the families that they created. And so we end episode 150. I love this episode because here's this young, young girl and she makes this life and she leaves behind 134 descendants. Her life was a study of survival and, um, and fortitude and she was blessed with strength and the ability to bear that many children. Um, and many of them survived and prospered. And um, not only that, but she was, you know, a pioneer at a, at a Contrecoeur. So if you go to visit Contrecoeur, you know, and this is your ancestry, there you have it. That's your land. You know, that's the way I look at it. So we bless her memory. We thank her for her fortitude. And um, we appreciate all that she did for us all. Thank you, Marie Benoit. And until I see you again, episode 150, au revoir.